Hey Twitter friends and YouTube, I haven't made one of these videos in like a month. There's been a huge train wreck lately with my family. So pray for us. Pray that we will be united again someday. Um, my five-year-old and husband have been living six hours away, but praise God, my oldest daughter is coming home today and I'm so excited about that. So I'll have both of my daughters, but my husband, I guess, is going to stay away for a while. <clears throat> which is probably for the best for all of us because he's he basically has been letting himself go more and more crazy. So, gotta help him with that. I tried to help him, but it didn't work. <clears throat> okay, here is some verses on satisfaction. And I was just thinking I had kind of like an epiphany last night that, you know, sometimes when... There's people where they won't be happy no matter what. Like, you just need to realize that, that they won't be happy no matter what. My husband's one of those people. Um, he's just never really happy with anything. And, I mean, I definitely struggle with that. I think maybe that, now that I'm away from him, maybe I'll get better with that. <clears throat> but I definitely did have, like, this discontentment a lot of the time of just not being happy with the way things were and wanting something to be different. But at some point we have to just accept things for what they are, you know, and just be happy with the, the, the place that God has you and the situation that God has you in. Like at some point you just have to accept it and say, this is okay. I'm cool with this. I'm going to be happy with this. And you know, you just have to do that at some point. Because if you don't, you're never going to be happy. You're always going to be miserable. <clears throat> Alright. Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places. And make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden. Like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. That's really good. Satisfy your desire in scorched places. Yeah. That's kind of us right now. Um, it's feeling like a scorched place, but it's really not. I mean, we're really, we're really still blessed, and I'm so happy that we're by my mom and my stepdad. They're really amazing Christian people, and so, you know, this is the best place. But it is a bit hard, obviously, for me to be abandoned by my husband and my daughters to be, but God will get us through, so... Hopefully it's just temporary and hopefully he will, he'll, hopefully his mind will come back at some point. John six thirty five. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. That's really good. So if you let yourself get filled with God, then you don't need anything else, theoretically. I mean, obviously we still need to have friends. Like you don't want to be a total uh, hermit and isolate yourself from anyone and everyone, but it is important to get your primary satisfaction from God because he is the only one who can meet all your needs. He's the only one who will be good to you all the time because he is good. He's the only one who won't lie to you and, you know, won't purposely hurt you. So, you know, you really need to just make sure that God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are your best friends because, um, they won't let you down. So praise God for that. Praise God. So if you are feeling distraught, just pray, you know, like it's good to have support from people and to talk to friends, but it's really important to pray about things and then God will give you the wisdom for that situation of how you should think about it or how you should feel about it. So that's good. Psalm 107.9, God satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. That's good. That's not just talking about literal hunger. Obviously, it's talking about if you're hungry for friendship, you know, God will give you friendships. But you have to be seeking after him and following him. So, <clears throat> obviously, if you need friends, you can always go to church. There's always plenty of people there that you can be friends with. Um... We've been kind of limited on going to church because my three-year-old doesn't seem to want to cooperate with going into the child room or sitting in the service, but, you know, my mom can watch her so I can go, so that's nice, but 
yeah. So make sure you look to God to satisfy you because he's really ultimately the only thing that can satisfy you. There's this really good quote by um, Augustine. It says, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. And that's very true. Proverbs 19.23, the fear of the Lord leads to life and whoever has it rests satisfied. He will not be visited by harm. Yeah. The fear of the Lord. Because if you fear the Lord, then you respect the Lord, which means that you will probably respect people more. And if you respect people more, then you will not be visited by harm. There's a verse that I kind of like that a fool invites a beating or the words of a fool invite a beating. Anyways, so be careful of not being a fool like with your words because you're just going to make people mad and it's going to make them want to lash out at you. But if you have a fear of the Lord, you will be respectful of other people and then you will live in safety and you won't have any enemies because you're wise and the things that you say are wise. So, of course, it's important to stay away from fools if you want to be wise. There's a good verse that says, walk with the wise to become wise. So if all you're talking to is foolish people, it's only a matter of time before you end up being like them. You know, you are who you hang out with. So if you want to be wise, you need to read the Bible, obviously, because that is the wisest input that you can have into your life. And make sure you're praying and make sure you are seeking out wise friends and not fools. Um, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Oot. The desire of my heart is just to be a mom, really. I don't really want anything other than that. <laughs> and that's what I always wanted, so... Praise God, he gave me two beautiful children, and I will take good care of them for the rest of my life. Even if their father doesn't, I will. So, and God will enable me to do that. And that was always kind of one of my biggest fears, actually, was like becoming a single mom. But God can get you through anything in life. You know, like, I had a fiancé die eight years ago, and it was hard, but God got me through it. And, you know, whatever happens to you in life, God can get you through that. And you just have to have faith. And I think that's why God lets us go through hard times to increase our faith that we can handle whatever it is that we need to handle. Like, currently I kind of am a single mom because my husband doesn't want to come home. So I just have to accept that and just know that God can get me through it. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So whatever is your truest, deepest desire, God will give that to you if you delight in him. If you seek after God, you know. So praise God. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's really good. Yeah, forget not all his benefits. So <clears throat> it's important when you are thinking about God that you need to remember all the things that he's blessed you with. Like it's easy to think of things that you want but you need to be thankful for the things that you already have in order for God to give you more. <clears throat> and your focus, I mean, it's good to have goals. It's good to have things like visions and plans for the future. But it's a lot more important to just be content with the way things are. Because if you're not content, you're just going to be miserable and you're never going to be happy. So, you know, you have to be satisfied. You have to remember all the things that God has done for you already and be thankful and as long as you're thankful, you'll be happy. But if you're like complaining and ungrateful for things in your life, you're just going to be miserable. I mean, you're only hurting yourself. Like there's really no benefit to complaining like at all. <laughs> so may God bless you. I pray that that helped you and made you wiser. God loves you. Have a great day. God bless.